Hello, it's great to have you join us for the Tuesday edition of Business Nigeria. My name is Tolu Lokwe Ogunjobi. Well, I'll be your guard as usual. First, let's tell you that the subsidiary of South Africa's banking group, RMB Nigeria, has raised its stake in the actualization of the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan with investments, financing, and range of products and services worth billions of Naira. The move has seen the bank supporting the economic blueprint in the six sector targets to drive growth. The managing director of the bank, Michael Laber, says the decision to play big in the realization of the EG, uh, EGRP stems from the belief that once the economy thrives, all the stakeholders will benefit. The six priority sectors targeted by the ERGP are agriculture, manufacturing, solid minerals, services, construction, real estate, and the oil and gas sector. The Securities and Exchange Commission says companies may raise as much as 200 billion naira uh, from the sale of debt instruments this year. According to the Commission, improved liquidity on the Nigerian Stock Exchange and FMDQ OTC Securities Exchange is encouraging firms sell more debt securities. Data shows that companies raised 23 billion naira in 2017 and 103 billion naira in 2016. The 2017 figure is largely owed to the large issuances by the federal government, although some states also issued some debt instruments. The Securities Commission says five companies have already submitted plans for debt sales totaling 60.5 billion naira. The National Bureau of Statistics says total credits from banks uh, to the economy dropped by 136 billion naira. That's in the first quarter of 2018. The Bureau says the banking sector also recorded more than 457 million transactions, valued at 32.48 trillion naira. According to its report, data from electronic payment channels in the Nigerian banking sector revealed that automated teller machine transactions dominated the volume of transactions during the said period. And in terms of credit to the private sector, the Bureau says total value of credit allocated to the banking sector stood at 15.6 trillion naira as at the, as at the first quarter of 2018. Well, it is important to know that Nigeria exported $463 million worth of wine to Argentina last year. The head of mission, Embassy of Argentina, Elena Mikusinski, disclosed this in Abuja during the launch of a new edition of Malbec World Day Wines Exposition, organized by the Embassy of Argentina in Nigeria. Mikusinski added that Argentina exports to Nigeria presently stands at 86 million dollars while the country plans to increase its presence in Nigeria and the area of wine production. She stressed that wine production will increase more job opportunities for young Nigerians. Well, the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, that's the NEPC, has urged government to invest more in the oil, oil sector, where that has always been done and they want more of that, to consolidate the gains recorded in the past years. Well, there was an exclusive interview with the Chief Executive Officer of NEPC. That's the person of Mr. Olushego Awolowo. Well, he says uh, investments in agriculture, solid minerals, will of course strengthen the economy and reduce dependence on oil. Enjoy the interview. The only um, improvement we got in our economy was in agriculture and non-oil exports. So it definitely shows you that is the way to go. And Nigeria, we must look inwards now and in order to produce and increase productivity uh, because that is really the key. That's where the strength is. And we definitely have to be an export-led economy. That's the only way we can make a difference. Look, oil gives us 90% of our foreign exchange earnings. Oil prices go down we have a problem, we go into recession. So we really must get other, um, other sectors to contribute. And when you look at our economy, it's over 56% GDP driven by uh, services. But we are not getting foreign exchange from it. And that is the crux of the matter. We just need to generate foreign exchange from other sectors of our economy. And I'm so proud that 
that is everybody is looking at that now. Everybody is feeling it. People are going back to the farms. People are going back to manufacturing. Industry is kicking off again. So we can we can export now. All the leather goes to Italy, Spain, and the, and America. So they're using our leather to make all their bags, all their big, big designers. The leather is mostly from Canada. Now, we, we, we now have an industry here. You can go around. When you go around, you see all these brands. They're trying to make shoes, trying to make bags. But where do they get their leather from? They're still importing the leather. And this is from the remnants of the leather that has gone from Nigeria into Europe in the first place. So we said, no, that is unacceptable. Let's bring the tanneries here now. Bring them together and let the, because for one, look, it was the right hand, they don't know what the left hand was doing, which is really the case in Nigeria. The tanneries did not know there was a business, an industry here for them. The industry did not know that the tanneries existed over there. So we brought them together and I'm so happy that from conversations going on, the, the tanneries are talking to the leather producers, the shoe producers, and uh, we're mixing, uh, matching them up. It's a business to business for them. So they now start producing, you know, for the Nigerian market as well. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a very good one. And I thank um, Femi World of Bags yeah. for this brilliant idea that, look, she had come to me, look, there must be a synergy, you know, because most people don't even know what is possible, you know, and I'm so glad that she's not being selfish because she's also a bag producer. She's not being selfish in it. Like, look, let us expand. There is room for everybody. Let people see the creativity that is abound in this country. And that's what I always say, you know, I, I go around this country all the time and it's just amazing, you know, the level of creativity that, that exists and or, or talk about innovation that exists. And that's the next big swing. Uh, for Nigeria really is export of services, innovation technology. Uh, by the time Nigerians, you know, we, we take them abroad with all our ideas, all the innovations they are doing, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be a big thing for this country. Well, a lot was said by the boss, uh, the NEPC boss, because he also used the opportunity to highlight uh, the details benefit of the African Growth and Opportunities Act, AGUA, and amongst other issues, talking about non-oil exports. AGUA simply means, you know, duty-free uh, for your products into the US of A. Now, mostly uh, people go, they, they don't know that it's all these products they can take to America is duty-free. So we're doing a lot of sensitization on that. Uh, but most importantly is for us to now start mass producing to get into, to connect to global value chains abroad and which is what we are doing now. We are getting the connect to the, the Walmart, you know, the, I'm built to, to be in, in Arkansas next week uh, also to meet with global value chains of how they can get, they can order you know, supplies from Nigeria. Yeah, we do, we do uh, semi-processed cashew. We do many other things really are going to America through Agua as well. With now the sensitization we're doing. The Agua hub is going to move from Ghana, but it's going to be back in Nigeria uh, by the end of the year. So that is the hub that we're going to be using, you know, to, to transform and increase our exports in, in, into the US of A. We're also planning uh, major uh, standalone exhibitions to connect to buyers' fairs abroad. So we can see, we know there's a huge interest in our market and it's, it's from agricultural products, uh, it, it, it's from uh, fashion, leather. Fashion is particularly big uh, for Nigeria where we can, but we need to get the hubs that can produce en masse for these markets, and which is what we don't have. Because to connect to this, really, uh, the countries that have taken advantage of Agua, so to speak, um, uh, Ethiopia, Kenya, uh, how did they do it? They got the Chinese manufacturers for those companies in America to set up in their company, uh, in their country. Uh, they created the environment for them uh, because labor prices is rising in Asia, it's cheaper in Africa 
they use that. And, but it's still those companies, it's still the Chinese company that set up in Ethiopia, that they already have the market in America that producing for them. So you, one step, one leg is to go that route. That, okay, let's also get the Chinese companies that we can accommodate you in our, in our industrial parks and you can produce for your market. The next one is to link our own people directly, you know, into these global value chains. And that's the path we are taking because we believe uh, we, we, we have the manufacturing and industry uh, from the private sector enough that can penetrate into those markets. As we speak, we have uh, one of our, two of our designers that are doing a pop-up in New York as we speak. Uh, they were invited on their own after we are taking them for the buyer's fair in Las Vegas. So they got the contact, so they are going on their own. You know? But when you tell them now, okay, give me 1,000 shirts, give me uh, 500 uh, trousers, that's where the problem comes. So until we build those hubs, those manufacturing hubs that can produce for these are tailors. The same problem we have with leather, we don't have enough workers. You know, Femi World of Bags has an order, she has to do 800 of these bags. She has only one man that is doing, that can produce this bag. It takes him two, three days to do one bag. So when does he get the product ready? So we need to train more of our, of our people into this kind of uh, artisanry. And, uh, and that's what Obi Leather will also tell you. It's a family business, they don't have enough. But I tell them that even many of these designers out there, uh, you, they, 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 they start as family businesses. Uh, they, they, you get your design, you get everything right, until you get a hub that can produce it for you on mass. So it's the same way we're going to have to, to, to take to show production and productivity in all these sectors that, that we have. Uh, yeah, the standards is, um, look, one thing I tell people is that uh, the fact that you're producing and you're doing it doesn't mean you're export ready. So let us take you through the, uh, the we do uh, a training, what we call zero to export training. And uh, so we, we help, and we also sponsor a lot of uh, capacity building. Uh, we just, uh, last year we had a, uh, a top Japanese uh, guy that came uh, to teach people on, on standards and also on packaging because they're two different things. Uh, it's standards to meet the standards, uh, then to uh, produce uh, according to, to specification and then to do your packaging and your labeling. So it's the whole total value chain that you must learn to go through that. So, but that is nonetheless, we, our quality has highly improved. And now we have the uh, National uh, uh, Quality Infrastructure Program that we're working with UNIDO. Uh, by the time we run through that, for the first time, it's a game changer in this country. We're going to have a quality control measurement. Now, for food stuff, agricultural stuff, we also have the Food Safety Management Bill that is now in the National Assembly. And once that is passed, for the first time in this country, you'll have to meet these standards. Yeah, we currently are working with UNIDO. We, we're taking companies through uh, what we call our conduit of excellence program. So it's from the farm to the table. Awolo was there, Chief Executive Officer, Nigerian Export Promotion Council, giving insight into issues surrounding the non-oil sector, issues of standards, creating a manufacturing hub more creativity, getting more people to play in this space is what the CEO is hopping on because at this time we still need to look away from oil even as the price of crude continues to look very attractive. But more importantly, we need to have a shocker in case anything happens because we don't control the price of crude. So, well, let's see how it all plays up. All the best for the NEPC and other agencies that are promoting non-oil export because that's the way to go to develop our country. Let's take a break and when we return, we'll be telling you more and this time in the power sector with regards to Business Nigeria. Come we'll stay with us, we'll be right back on the show. Glad to have you back. Well, Nigeria lost uh, 
more than 1.8 billion naira at the weekend. That's during the gas line and frequency due to lines and, and frequency constraint. The Nigerian electricity supply industry says the country's electricity generation dropped by 3,710.8 megawatts. Records of power generation from the Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing shows that about 1,513 megawatts was unavailable at six power plants due to the constraints of getting enough gas supply. The breakdown shows that Omotosho, Alauji, Girigu, Olonshogo and Odupani power stations, all under the National Integrated Power Plant, could not generate 1,305 megawatts. Meanwhile, Minister of Power, Works and Housing has inaugurated a brand new transmission substation at Odongunyo, Ikorudu area of Lagos State. Babatunde Fashola says this is just one of more than 90 projects of the Transmission Company of Nigeria that they will inaugurate across the country, aimed at achieving government incremental power initiative. We have details in this report. Minister of Power, Works and Housing Babatunde Fashola has ascribed the development in the country's power sector to the inclusion of incremental power in its program. The minister was accompanied by the lawmaker representing the area in the House of Representatives and the royal father of Ikorodu land, as he inaugurated a new transmission substation. He explains milestones reached in generating, transmitting and distributing power across the country. This is a project that should have been completed seven years ago. Funding challenges the story of our, uh, of our past, uh, has delayed it, but as you will hear from the people of Ikurudu, it is better late than never. So places like Odogunyo, Agbede, Odonla, Odokekere, Ogijo, PZ Industries, the steel industries here now have feeders that feed them directly, uh, close to 90 megawatt of power will now be uh, released from this place to serve these communities and uh, this is one down many more to go um, as i told you we have about 90 of these projects distributed across the country so we're forging ahead we we uh, we have momentum and uh, this is our home run Odogunyo industrial estate in the Kurodu federal constituency has the biggest industrial estate in west africa this estate has been bedeviled by power and infrastructure. But thankfully, uh, this administration is going to fix the Ikorodu Light Terminal port. Uh, a contract has been awarded. They're also fixing the Ikorodu Shagama Road, 20 billion naira. And this project that is being commissioned today is, will add up to the value chain and make Ikorodu federal constituency within the next couple of years the haven for investment. The Odogunyo substation is a brand new 2x60 MVA, 13233KV project executed in the Lagos region. And now that it is fully operational, it means that distribution companies have to increase corridors through which they can now supply customers in the area. Transmission is implementing what we call transmission rehabilitation and expansion program. Under this program, we are using in-house capacity we are working with contractors that are ready to work with us to expand the grid to at least 20,000 megawatt in the next three to four years. With the uh, commissioning of uh, Udungunya 2x60, uh, it's going to create uh, flexibility and a uh, uh, stabilized power supply to the people of uh, Ikorodu and uh, the companies in the uh, industrial uh, estate. As I speak to you, we have already concluded our evacuation plan and uh, within the next, uh, from now and the next two weeks, we will have taken close to 90 megawatts from the new facility. This increased electricity supply will help improve distribution, particularly at Odogunyo, Odunla, Odokikere, Itaoluo, Agodo and Ikorodu industrial area. Well, a good one for Ikorodu people there. What Nigeria's road transport owners want improved private sector investment in infrastructure. The business membership organization feels this will allow for better management of basic social amenities like roads. Lara Folayo takes it from there. The first and second quarter executive council and state chairman's meeting of Nigeria's road transport owners 
these business people are concerned about the deplorable state of the country's roads. They admit that budgetary allocations are insufficient and now call for more private sector investments. With over 200 southern federal, state and local government kilometer roads in Nigeria, with less than one over three of them in motorable condition, therefore private sector investment will be key in managing the road network infrastructure under a viable public-private partnership arrangement. The transport owners commend government efforts at reviving the country's rail sector. They see expansion of the country's transportation network via the railway system as an emerging business opportunity for them to invest. Abuja to Kaduna has been completed and now fully operational, while Lagos to Ibadan is underway with possible completion date of 2019. Later this year, work on Kaduna Canal Line will commence. There is already an approval by the Federal Executive Council for a coastal line that will be constructed from Calabar through Potako to Benin down to Lagos, with occasional support to some important economic locations in the southeast geopolitical zone. But it wasn't just about investments in transportation here. As the Federal Road Safety Corps cautioned the transport people on speed limits, even though it notes a decline in road crashes this year compared with the previous year. The drivers need to be more careful at night. We want all those extra headlamps to be removed from the vehicles. By 1st of June, we both agree we commence full enforcement. The transport owners foresee a decline in road distribution of petroleum products should Nigeria's refineries become fully operational by 2019. They advise themselves to bid for managing pipelines if the refineries eventually get fixed and the oil transport business experiences decline. Before we go, let's tell you that crude oil prices now trade mix at the international market this Tuesday as Saudi Arabia expresses concerns over tighter oil production capacity. Well, at the London market, the Brent crude trades for $75 per barrel. The OPEC crude steadies at $70 per barrel. Well, that's our show today. Thank you very much for watching. On behalf of the entire production crew, my name is Tolu Lokpel Gujovi. Join us again tomorrow, God willing for a fresh edition. Bye for now.